G'day guys, Andy Thomas here from Wolf on the Run again. Um, we did part one of the uh, making the fender risers. This is the video of part two of us installing them on the bike. All right, let's go. All right guys, these have had uh, three coats of paint. They're all dry now. So there they are. So let's start putting them on. All right guys, here we go. Start stripping it down, take off the mud guard. <clears throat> Got to disconnect those um, pipes there, which are the brake lines. So first off, I'm going to undo these screws and this one on both sides, and um, yeah, release the mud guard. Let's get going. As I said earlier, we've got these little collets for the plastic, so we make sure we don't lose those. That one's got a bigger collet. Let's go around the other side. As I say with these, there is um, manufacturers that actually make them for you. You can buy them online. Um, I know in Australia here that about, you get a set that I've got, similar to what I've made, um, but about $65 American dollars, uh, sorry Aussie dollars. Um, and I know there's lots of different variations. I have seen some that are $160, which were anodized aluminium, and they were all shapes and cast. Yeah, it was really nice, but really expensive. All we want to do is lift this up. All right, I'll take you back around the other side. There's a nut on there that's holding this bracket, which has got these two, two pipes on. So we'll undo those. That's a 9mm spanner. Okay, that's that off. And then unclip that. And that should be free. Same that side. There you go. As I say, you can see that I've done a little bit of damage there. Um, I did cut it back. So we'll also round that back a little bit as well now, we'll make a nice shape while we've got it off. Alright guys, so we're going to trim down this mud guard to say it's, it's quite damaged on the back end here. Um, yeah, we went, uh, <coughs> wasn't full off-roading but went off-road and uh, a rock came up, wedged there and uh, yeah, stuck in. So hence why we're doing this project in the first place, to raise this up. As I say, I did cut off about 30 40 mil from after the breakage but now we'll just tidy it up. So all I'm going to do just put a bit of um, masking tape on. And then I'll measure down to the weakest part of the brake, sorry, let's have a look first. Or the shortest part, which is there. So I'm going to go from that joint there. So about 55mm, and then I can measure the same from that way, get a straight line across, and then we can start curving. So 55, 
USB 5, and get a straight line across there, or straight as I care anyway. And we need something to round it off, so um, might use the paint can. Go a bit more just to that edge, this is where that line comes, and then we'll just put that to the outside edge there. Same that side, you guys see. As I say, it's not, to me anyway, it's not critical as long as it just tidies that edge up. Go down there. Same with that one. Alright, so that gives us just a bit of a bit of a line, bit of an edge where we go to. So I'm going to try and cut through the paper with the, the little Dremel, like the little multi-tool. Um, yeah, so I'll have a go. How about that? Shattered on me. I'll change that out and I'll try it again. I've just realised why it did shatter. Um, these are the ones, the cutting discs that come with the actual Ryobi saw. And they're absolute shite. Hence I bought the proper Dremel ones. And I thought I'd pick these up just by mistake. And I've picked that up and yeah, absolutely shit. So I'm going to change that for a proper Dremel one. Guys, just to let you know. I did have on my glasses, so yeah, you know, obviously a bit of safety is sensible. Um, they're not safety glasses, but they are eye protection, so let's carry on. As I'm cutting it, obviously it's heated up and it's, it's gluing itself back together. As you can see, it's a little bit, a little bit neater. I'll edge that up with a bit of sandpaper. Oh god, I just took the paper off. So I'm just gonna just give it a bit of a clean up with the paper. I'm sure it's gonna take a lot more bashing and a lot more scratching. And yeah, you're never gonna keep it pristine. Pris pris so it's an adventure bike. Do that adventure. With that. Let's clean that up a treat. Look, let's put it back on. Right, oh, that's the one. Now, hopefully, oh, yeah. See, you've not got a lot of play, so that 53 mil, as I said, is really, really critical. So, yep, let's get these. Lock sealed up. On the thread. There we go. One started. a little bit of locking juice Oh, the bolts I picked up, by the way, they're uh, from Bunnings. They're 20 millimeter, six mil thread, with the X head exactly the same as the ones we just took off. 
Um, I preferred those. I was going to go with the um, countersink and whatever and redrill these out, but I thought these would be fine um, as long as the plastic will work, which I think it should. But we'll see. All right, I'll get this one on. This little one on the back. Now this is not a drama regarding the spacings, as I said before. This is just one hole that we're raising up. So again, we're going to put the nuts inside there. So the nuts at the top. And obviously we've got a bit of play that way um, regarding where it lines up. So I think as long as I keep that perfectly plumb, per sorry not plumb, perpendicular with the original, I think that should work. Okay, we'll do the other side. Okay, again I'll try them just to make sure that uh, I've got a welding spot inside this one here. Can you see? I'm just going to have to redrill that out because the bolt won't go through. Be back with you. Alright, all done. No dramas. So I'm going to try this one again just to make sure. Um, before I do lock seal it, again, like I say, it's a critical measurement. Um, my thumbs are absolutely waste of time. Um, that's why I can't ride sports bikes. I broke both my thumbs a few years, well, a long time ago now. And that one has never gone straight, that's as close as it goes up, if you can see. Let me show you. I'll zoom out, just one sec. So that one, look, that won't go over that way no more, and that one's straight. So that's like completely out of joint. There's a big callus inside there from broke. So if I ride sports bikes, my thumbs just absolutely throb like hell. So I like to be up there on the bigger bikes. Anyway, enough of my problems. These, these both fit on this side as well, by the way. So let's, uh, let's get them glued up. And we'll get those in. My thumb, yeah, my thumbs are terrible. It's even like when we change the doona at... Um, at home, my wife um, will change the doona, and you know, doona covers have got the um, the buttons across the bottom. I'll probably do one to by the time she's done everything, and it's not ex an excuse for me not to do it. By the way, it's just that my thumbs just, yeah, I just cannot make them work. They just don't go together. Hence, you can tell them by the way I'm trying to get this in. Anyway, enough of me rambling on, let's get this on. As I say, look at that rod there. I'm hoping that that, I could always measure it from where we was to where we're going, but I think we're pretty close. I think you just, you know, obviously that's that line and that line is projecting the same way. We might have to bring it in a fraction, obviously, because we're going up straight with that one, not out. So I might have to just bring that in. Oops, a fraction like that. 
because yeah you know what I'm saying that's only going up that one's going out so that obviously that distance is going to get greater if I move that out with it can always measure it but you know what we'll trial and error it and and just see if it does work see if it lines up all right guys before I put it on I'm gonna have a quick check of these hole measurements here um, just so that what I was talking about earlier on the other side so those all measurements are roughly about 90 from that top one 94 mil so that oh yeah no, that's pretty good pretty good might have to come in a mil or so so it's not that far out glue's good stuff Alright, let's try that. Now, as you can see, I have got an issue with those bolts because inside there it's flat plastic it's flat so obviously that bolt is sticking there now so I am going to have to get some more bolts some flat heads countersinky just on that top one just going to have to get two more of those all right I've just had a thought I'm not I'm not going to change the bolts what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up the 20 mil and I'm going to put a hole in there and just use it as a locating guide and that nut will actually, the bolt, the top of the head will stick through there and I'm not too fussed on that that will work fine to me rather than me go out my way go and get some more different bolts, take it off, countersink it so I'm just going to put, I'm going to put a hole in there, the appropriate size and uh, yeah, use it as a locating pin let's get on with that alright guys, so we've got it on the bench so obviously I've worked out that that's moving up 20 mil so from the centre of there, I'm going to mark that 20 mil, and then the centre of that, which is about there, we'll actually check that from there, 10, 10, 10. I've just measured the bolt, the head of the bolt, it's about an 11 mil bolt, so um, the head of it's 11 mil, so we'll drill it 12 mil. This side again, it's going up 20 mil, so we'll measure down 20 mil, and again, if we just come from the center, the center through those that should be pretty close for us. He says, just double check that center, center, yep, yeah. so somewhere there. I'll pile it, drill it first, and then we'll put 11 mil through. Alright, just get a pilot drill set up. There's two. So yeah, it looks like that works. All we've got is just that little bit of silver showing through there, but that's, that's no big deal, no big deal at all, to me anyway, you know, just make sure I'm lined up, just nip these up, well that one wasn't, You see, it's half a hole. Let's zoom you in. The plastic there, look, is just halfway through that bolt where I need to be. So I'm going to have to do something with this. All right, back to the Burke workbench. All right, guys. Obviously, this was my fault through the bolts. As I say, I got the uh, the bolts with the big heads. I thought I wanted the X heads the same, and obviously, with the X head, you uh, need a bigger, fatter head. Um, 
the, the bolts I used yesterday um, while we were making them was actually a little flat head, little dome head. I might have been better using them, but I didn't want to use a Phillips head. I wanted to get that little bit of torque on it to hold it up, and I think with Phillips you just can't get that with a, a screwdriver. But uh, hey, uh, that would have worked fine, I reckon, but I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to adapt the plastic, and um, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so again, I'm just going to trim it with my uh, a little. Let's say guys, the only reason we're doing this is my choice of bolts. If you had got yourself some countersunk heads, you wouldn't have this drama. But I'm not changing it now. Alright, so I think we're good on that. So I'll uh, line these back up. Let's give them a nip up. I'm not going to tighten them, up, tighten them up fully yet. Just to the other side, exactly the same. locators inside here where they the pipes go in so make sure you get them in don't pinch them Clip all that together, tighten that up. Yeah. Here you go. That don't look too bad at all there really. But you can see my uh, my theory behind it. If you was to countersink this and get countersink bolts, I don't think that would be an issue. But um, yeah, it don't look too bad. You've got a bit of chrome here, so hey, you know, it's a feature. All right, so we've got these ones, I haven't tightened them up yet. I'm gonna relocate this one. Put that over the top again. Make sure you line up your clampers. So you just click on, click in place, as long as like I say, you line them up. Alright guys, I had a bit of a, a job start in that one for some reason, I had to move that bar over as I said, those measurements there were pretty crucial. So I did have to move it over. Give that a 
nip pop. And we'll tighten these ones up. Oops. Yeah. Here we go. As you can see. As you can see there's a, there's a lot more clearance there and at the back, let's get this off and show you you, see, you can see there's a lot more clearance in there now and get a couple of fingers all the way under there that will allow for the knoblies apparently the guys um, were saying that with the knoblies um, this was really way too close anyway so if you do get a bit of mud up here it was just jamming the wheels and it was throwing them off in places yeah so uh, yeah that's the Roy's has done all we got in there is work our way out of uh, how to clip this back here how to re-clip that obviously this is out a little bit now so I don't know if um, that's uh, the holes up there I don't know if there's enough play I need to get that back in so we'll have a look, we'll have a look. Alright guys, so with a bit of fiddling, oh, I forgot to press record, but what I did with this, I put a bit of silica spray on there and um, just moved it up a little bit and I managed to get the original bracket back on uh, yeah and everything's fastened back properly so yeah just slid that up to 20 mil because obviously we raised it 20 mil so I just slid that up 20 mil and put the original bracket back on that's it job done there you go guys that's your fender lifters or your mud guard raisers whatever you want to call them um, yeah so like I had the, the bolts cost me $3.60 from Bunnings the nuts I've got lying around the garage, the bit of flat I've got in the garage, the tin of paint I've got in the garage. Um, so yeah, it cost me $3.60 and uh, probably an hour of my time to get them done. Um, you, you notice I did have a couple of issues when I come across it, but that was my choice of getting those bolts. Um, realistically, I should have looked into it more and realised I did need to countersink the steel and get countersink bolts. But, you know, I'm happy with the way it's come out. Um, so yeah, alright. You want to have a go? Go for it. Thanks for watching. See you guys. All right, guys, that's your bar. Your bar. Blip, blip. All right, guys, so that's your uh, friend. <laughs> there you go, guys, that's your fender lifters or your mudguard raisers, whatever you want to call them.